So here we are in Coa Cars for our first demo. Coa Cars is providing vehicles to consumers. Consumers that want to understand what models they have in stock and also gather finance agreements to determine whether the loan requirements meet their needs. So we're going to use Agent Force to engage with the consumers, ask them questions about what their needs are about the vehicles, but also provide them and calculate dynamically that finance agreement. And that's where Heroku is going to come in. So here's the data about the vehicles that we're using. Let's go and take a look at the application in Heroku. So while we take a look at the code, we're going to use the Heroku Visual Studio Code plugin and deploy this code. And we're not going to use the usual CLI. We're going to click the Deploy to Heroku button. And this is a feature of the plugin that lets us use point and click to start the deployment. So while that's deploying, let's take a look at the finance agreement code. So the code here is written in Java, but of course could be in numerous other languages supported by Heroku. And the code also is well annotated and documented. Now, of course, this is a good practice for developers to document the code, but it makes even more of a difference when it comes to using agent force because you can understand more about what the intent of the code is, what its expectations are, and what information it provides. Additionally, we've also got the ability to highlight here that we can make a SOCL query from this code. I didn't have to set up any configuration or networking or authentication or OAuth, all of those things that are just basically plumbing and infrastructure. Using AppLink, I was able to make a SOCL query from any of the languages that are available in Heroku today. So now I can get hold of that vehicle information and I can do those computational operations to calculate the finance agreement and send that back to the user. So now we can see on the left hand side that our deployment is finished and the Visual Studio add-in for Heroku is showing us that we've got the Heroku integration add-on installed. And now let's go ahead and do some commands to configure this application into a Salesforce org. And to do that, we're first going to run the Salesforce connect command. And this is going to prompt us in a moment to log into a particular Salesforce org. Now, the neat thing about this is you could actually do this for multiple orgs. So you could teach your applications about more than one org, particularly if you want to see information from multiple orgs to aggregate that, or you want to perform operations across multiple orgs. It's a fantastic capability. Multiple orgs is very common throughout Salesforce customers. So now that we've uh, configured and authenticated ourselves, the exciting bit comes next. We're going to import this code or this application into Salesforce, and that's where the magic really begins. So let's go ahead and run the Salesforce import command. It's going to take this application that's been deployed and make it available under the setup menu. And the setup menu is the place to be to make sure that your capabilities is visible to the eyes of all of the Salesforce admins and developers. So let's go there next. So we're now in the setup menu. The setup menu has a nice page describing what Heroku is and some details and links to get to more information. But more importantly, here's our application. This is the application that we just imported with that CLI command and connected this org to. So we can also do things like take a look at the various uh, operations that are available through this application. And sure enough, here's our calculate finance agreement. And if we drill, for, drill further into the details, we can see there's the descriptions. So even at this stage within Salesforce, I don't need to be a Java developer or even know about Heroku so much that I can actually tell what this actual operation is going to do for me. So the good news is, is right now we can go straight away and create an agent force action. So let's go and click new agent button. We're building from an API and there is Heroku right there in the agent action category drop down. So we pick Calculate Finance Agreement and click Next. And sure enough, here are all the descriptions that we bothered to provide as a developer made their way all the way through into this declarative experience. So I have to tick a few more checkboxes here just to tell Agent Forth a little bit more about uh, the inputs and the outputs and some outputs that uh, I'm not particularly interested in paying attention to. And then I click Finish. So now you can see that our action has been added here. The next step to actually try this out is going to add it to an agent. And we're going to use the agent builder to do this because it provides a very convenient way to test our action as well. So let's go ahead and add to the list of available actions our new Heroku action. And we do this in exactly the same way we would do any other action. And sure enough, there is our calculate finance action. Great, that's been added. Now let's see if we can ask it for a finance agreement. So let's say I want to buy a car for $1,000 down payment, a maximum of 5% interest rate over a term of three years. 
Can you provide me a competitive finance estimate? Well, I can, but I need a little bit more information, says the agent. Can you tell me your email address so you can look up the details? So this is Salesforce. So what it's actually doing, and it's configured to do so, is to look up the contact details. So we've already got a contact in Salesforce. I just need to give it the email address of that contact for it to look it up. So I'll type in my email is johnsmith at cody.com. And once I've entered that, it's now able to start asking me some questions about the make and model and my preference of the type of car that I'm looking at. And by the way, all of this interaction and exchange is actually done by virtue of the configuration of the agent itself, all of these actions here on the left-hand side. We're actually just getting to the point where we can fulfill the requirements of the Heroku action on the left here. So let's give it some information that will help it pinpoint the particular model or type of car that I'm looking for. So I like um, the, the Maker Zig and the model M3. So it's now going to get a list of vehicles that are in that list that we saw at the start of the demo. So here it is, the vehicle that they have in stock matching my requirements. So I will respond, yes, I would like to see a finance estimate for this vehicle. So at this point, it's now got the information it needs, the vehicle ID, the contact ID, to pass that over to Heroku Code. And you can duly see that it has come back with the details, the total financing costs, the monthly payments, the, the term, and, in just, and the adjusted interest rate. Fantastic. So let's take a look at our next demo. Luminar Solar is, is a company that provides solar products such as panels to the consumer market, which allow them to make the best use of their energy needs in the most efficient way possible. So in this case, Luminar Solar has created a website it's powered by Heroku, built with Node.js and React but they've integrated agent force into it. How did they do that? They used the agent API. So the agent API is available in two particular modes here, in this case a headless mode. This particular area here is powered by agent force AI, but we didn't chat with it in the normal way. We asked it a question that we already knew would be asked by the consumer, such as, can you predict my energy savings for next week? And it took next week's weather forecast, their existing historic usage and came up with an answer. So already we've been using Agent Force before we even clicked on anything in this page. Fantastic. But of course, we can also chat with Agent Force in a more traditional way. And you'll notice this looks a little different because we're on the Luminar Solar website. So we've branded the look and feel to look more in line with their corporate needs and uh, color schemes and such like. So we're now going to ask it to analyze my system's metrics for this month. So now it's provided that summary. And once again, this is using Agent Force with a custom action we built with Heroku. And that custom action has obviously access to the data it needs to make that decision and provide this summary, which is actually telling us that our current uh, system is performing poorly and maybe we'd like to open a support case. So this is a great example of how we've used Agent Force from within a consumer experience with Heroku that's able to see the Heroku data, it's able to see CRM data and even create cases and create a really seamless experience for the user. So let's go ahead and say yes to that offer to create as a support case and uh, have somebody from the support team look into why my solar panels are not performing as we were expected. So now we can go over to Service Cloud and uh, refresh our list view here. And sure enough, there is our uh, newly created case. And we can see on the details tab here, there is the uh, relevant information for the support person to take over and hopefully resolve that customer's issue. Fantastic. So that concludes the two demos that we have for you today. But before you go, if you're interested in taking a look and building your own Heroku Actions, then we've created this fun tutorial that demonstrates that Heroku Actions can actually create visuals as well as textual output. In this case, we've generated a fun little badge as part of the Heroku Action you get to deploy when you're using our Heroku uh, tutorial for creating custom actions in Agent Force. And this tutorial is available now, and it's available in Python and Java. Thank you very much.